Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Voices Randomish. I'm your host, Eldridge J. Alexander, and tonight I have a couple of stories that I wanted to bring to you for your own protection. The first one is really about protecting us because it is about the newest scam that's called check washing. We'll talk about the $130,000 laugh, and then we'll talk about George Santos, who, who told 16 to 17 lies on his resume. And then we'll look at the standards to which NBA, NFL, and GOV are being held. If you are new to this channel, again, this is the Voices Randomist channel where we talk about pop cultural events, fashion, and music. Those are the things that I love. But for the most part, it's to engage in dialogue that really uplift and inspire you to do something different for you with you. All right. So let's just move right along because I want to know what your frequency is on these stories. Don't forget to hit that subscribe bell, but let's just get into the topic. The first thing that I wanted to talk to everybody about check washing and what check washing is, is it is literally that where acetone is used to remove the ink from the check. So in this example that you see in the window, this check was made out for $68 and someone changed it by using acetone to remove all of the ballpoint ink and then every, everything but the signature and then filling in the amount for $6,800 and presenting it with reputable ID apparently in order to put this check through or deposit it for whatever reason. Now, when I worked in the banking industry back in the early, the middle and late 70s, we had some real strenuous guidelines around accepting checks that were over $500. Normally, a person would have to come in Oftentimes we'd have to ask for two IDs because they didn't even have pictures on them at that time. You didn't have all the barcodes and the banks weren't connected at that time. So people could do what was called check kiting. It wasn't so much as this. They would forge checks and check kite. So they maybe stole checks out the middle of somebody's checkbook, wrote a check, put the check in the bank, and then went somewhere else and started writing checks against that check. Because once that check cleared seven days later, that was when they found out the money that the check was stolen or falsified or the amount wasn't right. They they couldn't tell for seven days because then, you know, you didn't have things set up electronically online. So thank goodness for the internet now, because as opposed to going looking on a microfiche or a signature card, you literally can go into type into it and it'll tell you online in real time, whether or not that person has the money there or if there are any fraud alerts. And just like when the people tried to charge the airplane tickets to FIFA from FIFA during FIFA in 2015, tried to forge and uh, do some airplane tickets on my account and the, my bank contacted me because I have fraud alerts on everything. And that's the other thing that you should do is you can put passwords on all of your utility, all of your accounts, everything that you have. I have passwords and a code word when I call in to get any information, whether it be a utility, credit card, Anything that I do, I've got cold words that make no sense to anybody but me and even a pin number. So it's best to have both on my cable account, any and everything, because people will get your information and try to open another account. So what the businesses do, if you have a pin number and a code on it, if a person can't verify one, both of them, they're not getting access. So that's the other thing that you can do. But let me just tell you what AARP.org the article that I found from them where they said that you can do these things to avoid becoming a victim of a check washer. First of all, pay your bills online because as long as you're not on a public Wi-Fi connection, paying your bills online is safer than writing a check and mailing it. That's what Amy Novziger of AARP, she's the director of the Fraud Victim Support. She said your bank account and your payment systems for your bills are encrypted. And how you can tell is when you're going online to make a payment, you always notice in the bottom left hand of column corner of the window of any app when you're on, if you're making a payment, it'll say SSL encrypted. That uh, that that that's encryption. When you see that yellow lock that tells you that, that's usually letting you know that you're okay. If you don't see that, you probably don't want to use that site. If also if you're not on your own personal computer. Don't use a computer of somebody else's to log in because the cookies that get saved and your password might get saved, you know, auto save. And then that person now has access to everything that you did on their computer. So the best thing to do is to use your own private computer or use your own phone with an app and apps. You can have VPN virtual private network on your phones and on your computer for little or nothing. So just something to think about. The second thing is, is, Deliver your mail to the post office yourself. Take that drive. Don't leave that envelope containing checks in your mailbox or out in the United States postal system collection boxes after hours. 
because there's a tool that they use now that they put glue on the end of it, stick it down in the mailbox, and they can pull letters up out, and they go through and take out the mail. The other one is it's still in the mailman's keys, robbing mailmen and taking their whole mail bag. So robbing mail trucks, you have to be aware there's a lot of criminal elements out there. Not everywhere is you know, going to be bad, but you want to take the necessary precautions so that you don't have the headaches later. Don't leave anything in those boxes after pickup. Take that letter inside to the nearest post office during business hours and hand it to a clerk or slide it through one of those slots where it goes directly into the post office, into the sorting bin inside the post office. I'm not talking about a slot that leads into the building. I'm talking about you inside the post office. There's a mailbox slot that's attached to the sorting room. That's where you want to put things that if you're going to put it and not stand in line. The next thing they do is they say, Use a black pen or a black non -e blue or black non erasable gel ink because gel ink will soak into paper and it's more difficult to remove than ballpoint pen ink, which stays on the surface and it's easy to wipe off, just like you take acetone and wipe off your nails. That's how easy it is to take the ballpoint pen ink off of a check. I know I'm going to show you one in a few moments. When we were little, if we used to make mistakes on things, we could literally, you could lick an eraser, put a little water on it, rub it, and it erased the ballpoint pen ink. I'm telling you, it's that serious. And if we made a mistake when you was writing an ink on a, on, on a paper or anything, you would take some of that water, erase it out, and put it back in because we didn't have, at, at that time, you either had whiteout, and whiteout used to get all gunky and all that. So pretty much you the biggest thing was to try not to make a mistake. But if you did, again, you hear what I'm saying. Don't let that mail that's coming to your house when you're on vacation or away for long periods of time during the day, don't let it sit in your mailbox. Grab your mail every day close to the delivery time. I literally work from home. And when I'm sitting in my office, when I see the mail person pull up in her truck, I immediately go outside and get my mail. In the spring, I have my door open so that people can see that I'm sitting there and watching when the mailman comes up and then, or mail lady or whoever it is. I see the truck pull up. They open my mailbox. They put something in there. I basically go out and get whatever it is. Usually junk mail, you know, advertisements, but still, I don't want to take a chance that it might be something because during the pandemic, they actually put my, my pandemic check in the mailbox. It was in there a couple of days. I didn't even know. So and that's because I, I didn't get money back from the IRS. I always had to pay. So they didn't have an account on me. They didn't have an account that they could automatically deposit into, so they had no choice but to mail me a check. Well, now uh, I gave them information, so please don't put send me any paper checks, right? I monitor my bank account. I have an alert set up on my phone so that, and usually during the day I have my phone off because when I'm working, I don't have my personal phone. I'm not joined at the hill. The only reason I have it here with me even now while I'm broadcasting is because I might read a few things my notes off of the phone. But other than that, please, ain't nobody playing with that. I monitor my bank account. If that alert comes up, on a, I look at it. But each day, if I don't get alerts, I still go in and look at my checking account to make sure that the transactions that come out are coming out for the correct amount. Because one time I went to Walmart, this was years ago, probably like, eh, probably 2000, because I haven't been to Walmart in a long time. I, it's just a crazy feel I don't shop there. But the thing about it is I went in there at that time and the next day on the news, I heard that they had an error with their crash registers where they were charging people twice and they told people to go home and look at their statements. I had already saw that on my statement. It was twice had already contacted my credit card company, but that just goes to show you that if you don't monitor the activity on your checking account and your credit cards, anything could be happening out there and you won't know. So just so you know, I check any transaction because if I don't recognize the dollar amount, I'm going to investigate, okay? I can have a subscription for Office, Microsoft Office come through. If I don't recognize if you change the dollar amount from last year, I'm investigating. I want to know why it ain't $84.99 if it's, 80, if it's uh, $85. Now I want to know why the extra penny is being charged. Because if you check them pennies and hold, monitor them, you ain't got to worry about the dollars. That's another whole uh, in, uh, story. Last thing but not least. Report any incident. If you think your account has been compromised, contact your bank as soon as possible. After any suspicious activity, banks are generally required to replace those funds in your account if it's due to fraudulent checks or stolen activity. Uh, only if you report the scam within 30 days of the date of the bank statement where you saw that it occurred. And then also you want to contact United States Postal Inspection Service and your credit reporting agencies and do like I did. Not only put a code on your credit reporting agencies, 
but on some of your major accounts, like I said, my utilities, my internet, anything like that, I, I, you can't just call up and change and add stuff to my account. So think about that for, all right, we're on to the next thing, on to the next thing. But before we do, this is what a wash check looks like. You can kind of tell it looks like this is just an example, a really bad example of a wash check, but a wash check, no less to just let you know how easy it is for somebody to go in and take a check. And this, and depending on if there's no watermarks or anything, that's the other reason why they put watermarks and things. But if somebody washes the check, the watermark is still there because all they're taking off is they altering the dollar amount and they're maybe taking off uh, everything else, but they're not, they're leaving that signature. So no one will question the signature. As long as the signature look good, the check is going to get cashed. So you need to understand that you got to guard your accounts. Literally, you got to guard them by looking at everything. All right, let's go to the next thing. The next thing is all about the $130,000 lie that Stormy Daniels told, according to uh, Michael, Dan Michael uh, Cohen, that apparently she was given $130,000 $130, just ahead of the 2016 election campaign to keep her mouth shut about the alleged affair that she was having with Donald Trump. Now, Cohen, who is currently, a, you know, in trouble, you know, because he he did what he did. He's testifying now saying that Donald Trump did falsify that record, that 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 was not a business payment, that that was a paid hush money payment. So here, here's the article that I that I pulled up from bbc news and i pulled it up from bbc because they always have a little bit of a different slant and this this article was updated on the 20th it said that he died he denies former president donald trump denies allegations made by stormy daniel daniels he's possible face oh i can't even talk this is so salacious former u.s president donald trump is facing possible criminal charges over allegations that he covered up hush money payments to ex porn actress stormy Daniels. you have people keep paying her hundred thirty thousand dollars to shut up no wonder she's an ex porn star she ain't got to work no more she claims miss daniels claims that she and trump's had sex and that she accepted a hundred and thirty thousand dollars or a hundred pounds from his former lawyer before the 2016 election in exchange for her silence on the encounter the lawyer michael cohen was later jailed on multiple charges the former president has denied he's had any sexual involvement with Daniel since the allegations surfaced in 2018. Now she went public. Her real name is Stephanie Clifford. And in immediate interviews, she had she said she met Mr. Trump at a charity golf tournament in 2006. She alleged the pair had sex once in his hotel room at Lake Tahoe, a resort area between California and Nevada. A lawyer for Mr. Trump vehemently denied it at the time. He didn't seem worried about it. He was kind of arrogant, she said in a response in, 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 to an interviewer's question, asking if Trump had told her to keep quiet about their alleged night together. Mr. Trump's wife at that time, Melania Trump, was not at the tournament and had just given birth. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh, ugh, ugh. So this is followed up by the last few pieces that I want to read here. And then I'm going to put this article from BBC in the link to the video so that you could go in and read the whole thing because it's really something else. The other things that said in 2016, before, days before the U.S. presidential election, Ms. Daniels said Mr. Trump's lawyer, Michael Cohen, specifically paid her $130,000 in money to keep her quiet about the affair. She said she took it because she was concerned for the safety of her family, said she was legally and physically threatened to stay quiet. So we're going to give you some money, but if you say anything, it could be curtains or you, you better be quiet, right? So in 2011, shortly after she agreed to give an interview to In Touch magazine about the alleged affair, she had an unknown man approach her and her infant daughter in a Las Vegas car park and told her to leave Trump alone. That's a beautiful little girl. It'd be a shame if something happened to her mom, she recalled him saying. She said this in a 2018 interview with CBS's 60 Minutes. The interview with In Touch would not be published in full until 2018. But before the 60 Minutes episode aired, a shell company linked to Mr. Cohen threatened Ms. Daniels with a $20 million lawsuit arguing she had broken their non-disclosure deal or hush agreement. 
Ms. Daniels told CBS show that she was risking a million dollar fine by speaking on a national television, but it was important for her to be able to defend herself. So the question arises, y'all, is it illegal to pay is it illegal to pay hush money? Is it? Can, is there something wrong with paying some hush money to somebody? Well, according to what I'm seeing in this particular article from the BBC, it's not illegal to pay somebody in compensation in excess for a non-disclosure agreement or an NDA. But since the payment was made a month before the presidential election, Mr. Trump's critics argued that the money could amount to a campaign violation. And in August 2018, when Mr. Cohen pleaded guilty to tax evasion and breaking campaign finance rules, in part related to his payment to Ms. Daniels and another alleged Trump lawyer. Although he initially said Mr. Trump had nothing to... Is it illegal to pay hush money? Is it? Can, is there something wrong with paying some hush money to somebody? Well, according to what I'm seeing in this particular article from the BBC, it's not illegal to pay somebody in compensation in excess for a non-disclosure agreement or an NDA. But since the payment was made a month before the presidential election... Mr. Trump's critics argued that the money could amount to a campaign violation. And in August 2018, when Mr. Cohen pleaded guilty to tax evasion and breaking campaign finance rules, in part related to his payment to Ms. Daniels and another alleged Trump lawyer. Although he initially said Mr. Trump had nothing to do, and by that I'm talking about Cohen, had nothing to do with making the payment. Mr. Cohen later testified under oath that Mr. Trump had directed him to make the hush payment of $130,000 days before the 2016 election. And he said the president reimbursed him for the payment. Mr. Trump has allegedly acknowledged personally reimbursing the payment, which is not illegal, but denied the affair and any wrongdoing regarding campaign laws. Subsequently, subsequently, uh, Cohen has been jailed under multiple counts after he pleaded guilty to violating those laws during 2016 election. So, you know, the thing is, is could he be indicted is the question. And, and a lot of people, do we really care? Well, over the weekend, Trump said he thought he would be arrested yesterday. That didn't happen. And to me, all of that pumping people up and telling them something is about to happen is basically to me is just another way to get people, you know, all bent out of shape and stuff. And then you got another whole issue going on here and he needs to leave that alone. Uh, last thing about this particular article is early this year, the New York City District Attorney's Office, Alvin Bragg, he set up a grand jury to investigate whether there was enough evidence to pursue a prosecution against the former president over the money paid to Ms. Daniels. He's the person who's going to decide whether or not there's going to be an indictment if one is issued. The grand jury is held behind closed doors and set up by the prosecutor to determine whether there's enough evidence to pursue cage charges in a case. And if the charges are issued, it'll be the first criminal case ever brought against a former U.S. president. And so on his social media network, Truth Social, good Lord, can we get the irony of that? Mr. Trump called the investigation a political witch hunt by a corrupt, depraved, and weaponized justice system. I want to know what your frequency is on it. You know, if the man paid hush money just before the election to cover up an affair and then writ, wrote it off as a business expense, okay, you did something wrong. You you committed fraud and tax issues are going to come up. So I want to know what your frequency is on this. And, uh, you know, go and put the comments on there. Should he be indicted if he is indicted? Do you really care? But anyway, I just want to bring this story to you. Next on the list is, is just to show you the pattern of corruption. Oh, why did this stop recording? So the question arises again, is it illegal to pay hush money? I don't really know and I don't really care at this point. So let's get on with our next story. Next story is about this guy, George Santos. 
This man allegedly told 16 lies on his resume. 16. Who does that? And how come they didn't do anything about it? Well, this is what gets me, everybody. Anytime you go to fill out an application, there is always this particular message on the back of the application. Before we even get to that, let's just, let's just talk about all the lies that he told. He lied about where he went to high school and college. He never worked on Wall Street either. He allegedly lied about finding, uh, founding an animal uh, program. He allegedly swindled a disabled vet whose dog was dying. He ripped off allegedly an Amish dog breeder with a check. And the questions about was he married or not married, right? Unclear whether his mother's death was related to 911. His grandmother was not a Holocaust victim. He did not have employees who died in the post shooting. Might be a little Jewish, but he's not Jewish. Was he a drag queen in Brazil? Was George Santos on Hannah Montana? And was he a Broadway producer? Number of lies he could have told y'all got me asking, is he human? Right? Is he human? Will the real person please stand up? Are you human? That's the question that I'm asking. So, 16 lies on the resume. 16. And this man is in Congress. Why does he get allowed to stay there when this is my understanding? And even look at the person in the background. Look at these people looking. They don't look like they're too happy that he's there. Dude got his eyes closed. Who knows what she's doing? They all looking down, right? They know he's not supposed to be there. He walking the hall, sitting on uh, committees and stuff, telling us about our lives and governing us, and you lying through your teeth. How dare you? I, I don't even know how people could put up with this. There should be an outcry in the streets from all the people who put him in office and even the people who didn't say, it. why are you letting someone who is immorally, ethically, and you know, possibly done some illegal things continue to represent us in our government? You make us look stupid to these other countries. You know, China and Russia and everybody else is laughing their asses off at us, little idiots in the United States. Why? Am I pissed about this? Is because I couldn't get away with this statement of accuracy on job applications, the hoops that they put you through, especially when you're a person of color to get a damn job. Whenever I looked on the application, I always read the fine print and it always said, I understand that the falsification, misrepresentation or omission of a fact on this application or any other accompanying documents will be caused for a denial of employment or immediate termination of employment, regardless of when or how it was discovered. And this was as of November of 2004. Now, I've seen those on every application since 1974, 40 years, 50 years ago, 50 some years ago, when I went to apply for my first job at Sears and Roebuck and every subsequent application that I've ever filled out, there's this long paragraph and sometimes they have you sign in two places an initial in the third place so if you signed here you initial there you initial there if you lie on the app it's grounds for dismissal so why is this guy still in office and we know he lied that's not fair to allow these people to be held to a different standard he even claimed Ask yourself, is this guy even from the planet Earth? He don't lie so much. We don't even know who he is. You know, really just ask yourself. Claimed that he was a journalist in Brazil. Come on, y'all. Come on. Stuff that you could go back and do checks on. If you do your due diligence on a background check, I work in HR and I've worked in HR in the past. Do you know that you could be working somewhere and if that background check come even after you employed, they can separate. They will separate you. How come this guy isn't separated? Pissing me off to the point of pissed ass me. That's all I got to say to you. Because here, here we are. So if you look at this list of crimes here, NBA versus NFL, 36 been accused of spousal abuse, seven been arrested for fraud, 19 have been arrested, accused of writing bad checks, 117 directly or indirectly bankrupted or at least two businesses, three have done time for assault, 71 cannot get a credit card due to bad credits, 14 have been arrested on drug charges, eight have been arrested for shoplifting, 21 are defendants in lawsuits, and 84 have been arrested for drunk driving in the last year, and it is members, the 535 members of our United States Congress. So help me understand. 
how it is that we can hold NBA players to a different standard than we do somebody like a George Santos or a Donald Trump, right? Why is it that we're allowing our country to go down a shithole just so that we can that these people can have jobs? You know that if there was one of us, we would no longer be in office and we wouldn't have our job. So if it feels like I was on a rant tonight, hell yeah, I was on a rant because I'm sick and tired of these people using whatever power and privilege they have in the background to get jobs that where their ethics and morals and legal practices don't line up with what they're supposed to be representing. It gives me a real dissonance feeling, meaning that what I think about these people and the way I'm feeling is not, they're not coinciding because they're not doing the things that they're supposed to do. So it's causing all this anxiety and upheaval in my brain because I'm trying to figure out how in the hell you let these people be in office when if I even don't dot an I across a T on something, I'm going to be out. And I want to know about from the rest of y'all what your frequency is on this, okay? Thank you for tuning in that you came on out here to, to holler at a sister on Voices Random Mission. If you like this video tonight, you know it ain't perfect, nothing is. But I'm bringing you the information so that you are on high alert and you know that somebody out there is washing checks. And we got a lot of people in government who are corrupt. And as we get into the next election year and you start to hear all of these campaign promises, I want you to remember, go back and look at the names of the people that are running and go back and look at the articles over the last couple of years and see the things that they've actually done either for you, to you, or by you to make you a better person. If you don't see any of those things, you probably should be looking at different candidates. Don't get caught up in the, the fervor of the ads and forget all the bullshit that has happened to us over the last couple of years. So I want to thank you for tuning in to this broadcast tonight. I'll see you in the next one. And by all means, please make your comments there because I do want to know what your frequency. Thank you for that. And we'll see you next time on Voices Randomish. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Goodbye now. Take care.